Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the important features of the femur. This is the femur bone. The femur is the longest bone in the body and this is the bone of the thigh. And you can see how the femur is positioned. You can see how the femur is positioned. So it is the longest bone in the thigh. So let's look at the important features of the femur. I will divide this femur into three parts. The proximal part, the body or the shaft, and the distal part. The proximal part, the body, and the distal part. Let's look at the important features in the proximal part. So first of all, you can see the rounded part here. You can see, can you see this rounded part? This is referred to as the head of the femur. This is referred to as the, the head of the femur. So this is the head of the femur. Then we this head of the femur articulates with the acetabular fossa of the pelvis. So this is the pelvic bone, and this is the acetabular fossa of the pelvic bone. You can see how the head articulates with this fossa to form the hip joint. So this is the hip joint to form the hip joint. So, if you notice, there is a hole at the head here. There is a hole here at the head. This hole is the first to us the fovea for the ligament of the head of the femurs. The fovea. So, this hole here is referred to as the fovea for the ligaments of the head of the femur. So, there is a ligament that helps in the stability of the, of the hip joint. That ligament is known as the ligament of the head of the femur. But here, this gives attachment to that ligament. And that's why this hole is here. Then we have another important feature. Can you see this structure, this part now? This part is referred to as the neck of the femur. This part is referred to as the neck of the femur. Then if we've seen the neck of the femur, in between the head of the femur and the neck of the femur. There is a line, there is a line that crosses round. There is a line that this dark place that I'm marking now. This line that I marked. This is referred to as the, the line for the attachment of the synovial membrane. As a matter of fact, synovial membrane is found in every ball and socket joint. Eh? It's found in every ball and socket joint. Not just every ball and socket joint. It is found in visually most of the joints in the body. So most of the joints, that is the synovial joint. It is found in the sin all the synovial joint of the body. So this line gives attachment for the synovial membrane. Then there is a protrusion here. There is a protrusion here. This protrusion 
is referred to as the greater trochanter. This is referred to as the greater trochanter. Why inferiorly there is another protrusion? Why inferiorly there is another protrusion? And this protrusion is referred to as the lesser trochanter. So why this is the greater trochanter? Here is the lesser trochanter. Then, inside here are the greater trochanter. Inside here, inside here, this place where the marker is faced, there is a hole there. There is a hole here. There is a hole here. And this hole is referred to as the trochanteric fossa. This hole is known as the trochanteric fossa. Then, from the greater trochanter down to the lesser trochanter, there is a, a line or a profusion in form of a line that moves from the greater trochanter down to the lesser trochanter. There is a profusion that moves in form of a crest or a line down to the lesser trochanter. This is known as, because it is in between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, it is known as the intertrochanteric crest. It is known as the intertrochanteric crest. So, because it is found in between these two trochanters, it runs along the both of them. That is why it is called the intertrochanteric crest. Then at the middle of the intertrochanteric crest, there is a protrusion at the middle. This protrusion at the middle is referred to as the quadrate tubercle. This protrusion at the middle of the intertrochanteric crest is referred to as the quadrate tubercle. Then, there is a line that moves from the neck. You can see there is a line here that moves from the neck of the femur down. There is a line here. This line here is known as the intertrochanteric line. This line here is known as the intertrochanteric line. Then, just directly under the lesser trochanter, just directly below the lesser trochanter, there is another line that moves just directly under it. There is another line that moves from the lesser trochanter down this marked place now. It is known as the pectineal line. It is called the pectineal line because it gives attachment to the pectineal muscle. And that is why it is called the pectineal line. Then, just directly under or below the greater trochanter, you can see this marked protrusion now. There is a protrusion here that I marked. This protrusion here is known as the gluteal tuberosity. It is known as the gluteal tuberosity. It is called the gluteal tuberosity because it gives attachment to the gluteal maximus muscle. It gives attachment to the gluteal maximus muscle. And that's why it is called the gluteal tuberosity. So at this particular protrusion is where the gluteal maximus muscle finds its attachment. Then the gluteal maximus muscle, the right, sorry, the gluteal tuberosity continues inferiorly. It continues inferiorly as the as the, the lateral lead of the linear aspara. So it continues 
inferiority, you can see it continues as a protrusion inferiority as the lateral lead of the linear aspera. Why there is another protrusion here? Why there is another protrusion here that is known as the medial lip of the lap of the linear aspera. This is another protrusion. This is the lateral lip of the linear aspera. This is the medial lip of the linear aspera. At the shaft of the femur, these two lip join together. These two lip join together to form the linear aspera. To form the linear aspera. So the both lateral lip and the medial lip join together to form the linear aspera. Then the linear aspera continues inferiorly. If you notice, it continues inferiorly and divides again. It continues and divides into two. If you notice, it continues down inferiorly or this study and divides into two. The lateral part or the lateral division and the medial division. You can see this marked line here. This is the linear aspera moving down to divide into two. This line that moves to the lateral is known as the lateral supracondylar line. It is known as the lateral supracondylar line. Why the one at the medial part is referred to as the medial supracondylar line. Then both the lateral and the medial supracondylar line, the two lines form a triangular surface. It forms a triangular surface. You can see this triangular surface here. This triangular surface here is referred to as the popliteal surface. It is referred to as the popliteal surface. The reason why it is called the popliteal surface is because this forms the base of the popliteal fossa. This forms the base of the popliteal fossa. Then, if you look at the uh, medial part, if you look at the medial part of the femur, there is a profusion here. There is a protrusion here. Look at this protrusion here. This protrusion is known as the adductor tubaco. It is known as the adductor tubaco. The reason why it is called the adductor tubaco is because it gives attachment to the adductor magnus muscle. It gives attachment to the adductor magnus muscle. I also forgot to tell us that the linear aspera gives attachment to the adductor longus, adductor brevis, and the bicep femoris muscle, the short head of the bicep femoris muscle. The linear aspera gives attachment to the adductor longus, adductor brevis muscle, and the short head of the bicep femoris muscle. And the adductor tubaco give attachment to the adductor magnus muscle. Then there is another protrusion at the medial part. This protrusion, this circled protrusion here at the medial part of the femur, distal femur. This protrusion here is referred to as the medial epicondylar uh, medial epicondyle of the femur. It is referred to as the medial epicondyle of the femur. Why the protrusion here at the lateral part? Why the protrusion here at the lateral part is referred to as the lateral epicondyle of the femur? Then, if you move inferiorly, there is this uh, edge that looks like a ball. 
there is this edge that looks like a ball. You can see this edge that looks like a ball. This is known as the medial condyle of the femur. This is the medial condyle of the femur. Why the one at the lateral part here now at the lateral part? You can see the one at the lateral part. This at the lateral part is referred to as the lateral condyle of the femur. Is referred to as the lateral condyle of the femur. Then there is a fossa in between these two condyle. There is a fossa in between these two condyle. You can see a fossa here in between these two condyle. This fossa is known as the intercondylar fossa. Intercondylar fossa. This is known as the intercondylar fossa. Then, if you turn the femur, if you turn it anteriorly, you notice that there is this surface here. There is this surface here. You can see this surface here. This surface is referred to as the patella surface. It is referred to as the patella surface. So, it is this surface, the uh, media and the lateral condyle, together with the patella of the of the knee, forms the articular surface of the knee joint. Contributes rather to the articular surface of the knee joint. So, I believe we've been able to see all the important fissures in the femur. We've been able to see all the important fissures of the femur, ranging from the head of the femur, the neck of the femur, the fovea for the ligaments of the head of the femur, the line for the attachment of the synovial membrane, the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, the inter trochantelic crest, the quadrate tubaco, the gluteal tuberosity, the inter trochantelic line, the lateral and the medial lip of the linear aspera, we join together to form the linear aspera. Then the linear aspera towards the distal part divides again to form the medial and the lateral supracondylar line. Then also the adductor tubaco, the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle, the medial condyle, the lateral condyle and the and the intercondylar fossa and as well the patella surface. So we've come to the end of this video and I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel Learn with Chisum Great. Please try as much as possible to like this video, comment your questions and also share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.